Very tight yeah, crowd. Yeah. Very straightforward. Mm -hmm. What is your view of the hijacking of the airplanes? Well, it's not the view one expresses on that really that matters. It is the question behind it. Those Palestinians who will have to give expression to their feelings all the time, one way or the other, it can of course harm the normal uh, affairs of the world, but uh, the Palestinians are there without their country and they have to make the world feel their presence. Hijacking was only one aspect of it. One can expect other activities, unfortunately. What, what kind of other activities would you expect? I can't foretell really. I didn't foretell the question of hijacking until it came about. There's been criticism of your country for harboring the guerrillas, for giving them a haven, a base from which they can operate. Well, uh, Lebanon has welcomed long ago, after the exodus of the Palestinians, after the 48 catastrophe, has welcomed the Palestinians in Lebanon. Uh, as far as their activities go, of course, they try to control them within the law. But you can't police the people, as I say again, when it's a people without a country. They want to regain their country, and they are fully entitled to it. We can't do more. Do you think you could have done more to uh, incorporate them inside the Lebanese state, to make them citizens of this country? Uh, for quite a few reasons, this was almost impossible and impractical. And for another reason, they won't accept it. They call themselves Palestinians, they feel it, they want to regain their homes, their land, and they won't accept to be integrated. You know, there's been this criticism, uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with, that they were permitted to live in camps and in squalor as a permanent object of propaganda against Israel. I knew of this propaganda stunt, as usual, coming from the Zionists, but it wasn't so really. The country couldn't absorb them economically. They were kept in camps, not because we liked it, to see them in living in that misery. Nobody did. I think it was inhumane. But we couldn't practically and economically absorb them in the Lebanon, poor as Lebanon is. And they had to live on the mercy, at the mercy of the United Nations uh, donations. Proof enough that in the recent government there has been a certain minister, interior, minister of the interior, who uh, uh, created confidence between him and the Palestinians, and there were very much less incidents of late. Do you expect as a result of the hijacking that there's going to be a, a long period of hostility, say, in the West towards the Arab world and towards your own country? No, I don't, because things will clear up, and this uh, what I call most of it false propaganda that has made use of the recent incidents of hijacking can die away and then people will realize more clearly the situation. So the Rogers peace plan, uh, I don't know if it's fair to say, doesn't actually confront this central question of the, the Palestinians. Would you agree with that? Uh, it is elusive in its terminology like the resolution of the United Nations that it was based on, elusive also, as it was, because they admit the rights of the Palestinians, but what rights are they? Don't, they don't specify. What is the right of the Palestinians? The Palestinians have been put out of their land and their homes. They want to regain their lands and their homes. That's their right. Is that to be admitted? Is that to be rectified? If at all, the whole situation will, be, uh, will end. The whole question will be solved. Well, since that isn't part of the, uh, the peace plan, do you think it has much chance of success? It is part of the peace plan, but it goes in vague terms. Well, it, since the, the, it's put in, try to put it differently, if, since it is in such vague terms, the treatment of the Palestinians in the peace plan, do you think it has much chance of success? 